Hippogriff Knights are one of the coolest units in the game, in my opinion. Definitely one of the coolest units on Bretonia's roster. Unfortunately, they're not amazing. They're definitely pretty good. But today, Slade's going all in with three Hippogriff Knights up against the Lizardmen, led by the Fanchantress, Gotrek, and Felix all on foot with the Beast Slayers of Bastone. Looking quite swell there with their Grail Relic as well, just to really send a message. Not that there's any terror for this Lizardman build, as we'll see in just a minute, but glorious. At, uh, what, 18 Hippogriff Knights in total? Spread out over three units. Absolutely beautiful. On the other side, we do have a High Slon, so uh, some Danger of Tempest. I do see it on the tool tip down there. And then we've got Skink Cohort up front. Got some Croxigors. Sora Spear is definitely very solid in this matchup. And Chameleon Skinks. A couple of them, one on each flank. So we'll, uh, we'll see as this gets going here. How the... Lizardmen are able to deal. Obviously, Tempest will deal quite a bit of damage and slow down Hippogriff Knights, but it won't actually uh, do enough damage to one-shot their unit models. Unlike Pegasus Knights, it's one advantage, right, that the Hippogriffs have over the Pegasus Knights is that they have much more HP per model. Lower model count, of course, means that they just don't take that. Uh, well, they obviously take the same amount of damage, right? They don't take as much model damage, per se, and they don't actually start losing killing power. Very important as healing for Bretonia. Of course, Lore of Life uh, only can heal models, does not actually resurrect unit models, right? Can only top off their existing HP, can't bring them back to life. So, something to be said there. But uh, Slade going to approach very patiently here. He's just got this little block of elites. Going to move up and engage... And then the Hippogriff Knights will swing up and around the flank very shortly here. You can see that the first Tempest go does get popped. Thankfully, it doesn't hit all three of these units. It just hits the one, right? Uh, it does have enough of an area of effect. If they were all in a super blob, it could have hit all three, but nicely spread there just a little bit to or, uh, counteract that. And, uh, yeah, then the Hippogriff Knights are going to come forward. The one unit that it does hit does deal significant HP damage, but notice, again, they haven't lost any unit models, which is super important can get healed and topped up and still fight at full strength, more or less. So, let's see. He does see the Chameleon Skinks, obviously, and this is definitely the right call in terms of target priority. It's just to take out these skirmish units. There's no mobility to respond for Lizardman. Lizardman player seems a little bit passive anyway in terms of responding to this heavy threat. Um, again, not that they have much ability to respond. I mean, they could try and run some Croc scores over there at 46 speed, but they're not really going to do much. Um... I mean, they'll definitely block him at least for a decent amount of time. But uh, armor-piercing damage-wise, if they could get an attack buff, I do think... Did that Slon actually bring all the spells? I think he actually did bring all the spells. A little bit of a mistake there, but he does at least have Hand of Glory to throw on the Spears and on the Croc Source to potentially deal some damage to those Hippogriff Knights. Looks like Arcane Unforging on Gothrek. A little bit of an odd choice there, but already having an Awakening of the Wood on some Skinks here. And the Banishment going to be unleashed from the Slon, likely to do more friendly fire than anything, given all the skinks in the immediate area. But uh, yeah, the skink unit rushing in for a rear charge immediately just gets hit by that banishment. Pretty rough stuff there, but hey, that's just how it goes sometimes with those Vortex spells. Uh, meanwhile, the block sort of making it into combat here, a little bit separated from the rest of the infantry, but it is what it is. Meanwhile, the Hippogriff Knights are going to swoop back and come back over, try and get back at this main line. One unit of chameleons already off the field, another getting chased quite far, but I understand wanting to get rid of them absolutely. Now, in the Lizardman situation, you definitely want to try and, like, mop up these uh, Beast Slayers as they're isolated from the rest of these units, get a unit of Crocs Corps, maneuver up and around. That being said, this single entity squad, they also don't have a lot of great killing power to take out. Um, I mean, in terms of, like, direct anti-infantry killing power... Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. The Chameleon Skinks definitely would have uh, been able to deal with Gothrek fairly efficiently, but, like, even in a circle beating, the Croc scores will only do so much here. The combination of the physical resistance on the Fey and the healing means that she's unlikely to take all that much damage. And, of course, an Earth Blood to help counteract the one Tempest that did hit this one Hippogriff Knight. Blood Statuette of Spite as well, just trying to deal as much damage as possible. There's still all six unit models online, though, for the time being. Let's get up close. Watch these amazing Hippogriff Knights fight it out. Game looking absolutely spectacular right now. Really hoping they fix some of the issues with flying unit pathing in Total War Warhammer 3. Otherwise, Hippogriff Knights and Pegasus Knights are going to struggle quite a bit in certain situations. They'll still be good and, like, 
I can already theory craft uh, uh, some examples, right, against like you know, Korn, any of the Warriors of Chaos or, or a Monogod Chaos factions, right? Um, like the, you know, against the Warriors of Korn or against uh, if they end up getting, getting heavy armor units, you know, against some of the other Monogod factions. But even just as they are right now, that heavy shock um, to clear out like Slanesh units, for example, I definitely could see them being quite useful. You'd have to watch out for Furies in the air, but... I think Bretonia just taking an elite air force against most of the demons will work out pretty efficiently, I have to say. Like against Zinj too, uh, in Doom Knights are just going to get completely clobbered in the air by Hippogriff Knights, I would hope, and uh, Royal Pegasus Knights and whatnot. So, and then drop down and nuke Zinj Knights on the ground. It's actually, you know, one matchup where uh, Bretonia, because of the focus on shielded cavalry, you know, Nike's air superiority tools as well, and then your own very cheap long-range archers. You could see them actually trading pretty well against Zinch. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, anyway, for the time being, Hip Rift Knight's definitely taking some damage. There was this extra unit of Star Chamber Guardians that I hadn't noticed until now. That's definitely going to be extremely dangerous for all these Hippogriff Knights. But uh, for the time being, the <laughs> Grail Relic just getting absolutely circle beaten by Croc scores. The Fan Chantress's drain is going to be pretty significant at this point, but all the Hippogriff Knights are away from the infantry fight for the time being, uh, just absolutely nuking this Slond, right? Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, and now it's back to the blob fight. <laughs> at this point, we should see some absolutely beautiful rear charges, and this is really, I mean, like, Bunker Blessing a big blob. <laughs> bunker Blessing, I, I can't even say it. Bunker Busting a blob. Try saying that five times fast <laughs> like this. Is one of the best use cases for uh, the Hippogriff Knights, just rear charging, like, a bunch of units all at the same time, basically. Um, they can, therefore, make good use of their splash attacks. If you have to be a little bit careful getting fully saturated in here, though, uh, with their HP situation, it's pretty good, I guess. And a mass terror route as the Slon is gone. Of course, they're all suffering leadership penalties. No one here is immune to psychology. I think not even the Temple Guard. Yeah, not even the Temple Guard. So they probably will terror route in fairly short order as well. Right now, just one Sora's Spear, fairly stable. The uh, Star Chamber Guardians definitely not feeling great, but holding at least for the time being. But uh, man, that big terror shock charge is absolutely brutal. And, uh, yeah, the multi, uh, I call it different things, multi-charge, alpha strike, basically what I'm talking about is just charging unit from multiple directions at the same time with high shock units. It's a tactic that's, you know, you might call it the Slanesh sandwich in the context of game three, right? Or uh, eh, mobile hammer and anvil sometimes, right? Where it's, it's essentially like a hammer and anvil except you're, like, charging from, again, like, three or four directions at the same time. Not necessarily even fixing a unit on one side, but just just nuking them absolutely from all angles. And Hippogriffs, it's one of the best things they're best at, absolutely. And, and so when you have three units like this operating together um, with sort of a, an anvil, right? A true hammer and anvil, I guess, of uh, these heroes, right? The, the he heroes acting as anvil, the... Hippogriff's acting as a hammer. Anyway, you get the point. I've rambled on long enough. It's a beautiful replay. Just thought I'd show you guys this. I'm returning from vacation probably on the day that you're watching this. So I uh, probably will get back to some streaming fairly shortly. I've got the qualifier qualifier for the Summer Championship later this month. So be stay tuned for that. More Legendary Slade X memory on the way as well. No doubt about that. Um, yeah, I, I can't help but feel this little Lizardman player is maybe a tiny bit new considering the... Taking all the spells, although definitely that's something I have done even, you know, fairly recently is accidentally take all the spells, so maybe not. But just in general, the sort of playing a little bit passive there, I think, worked against him. But ultimately, at the end of the day, there really wasn't a lot of chance of killing this Wedge Death Squad right here. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to the magic resistance changes, especially to the, the Pain Chantress. Right now, she has such high magic resistance that you know, any units with magic damage have a hard time making contact with her. And of course... Given all the Grail tier units, you do want to take units with magic damage against Bretonia. So, uh, with it being changed to spell resistance in game three, she will be a lot weaker against those uh, magic damage units and just generally more balanced, I feel. But anyway, that's it for today. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this. If you like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.